So this is Calcat the Calcaster, and this is a, a brief review of the first three episodes of Moon Knight, which I watched, I binge watched. Um, yeah, it's odd. <laughs> um, yeah, it's one, of, it's one of those ones where the, uh, the visuals look very much like my parodies, what they, because uh, I, I copy the Marvel style and they would transform parodies, so I have like face here and face here and slightly out of focus, in focus kind of shots and things like that. Visually, the style copies Marvel, which is weird because usually the Star Trek parodies are Paramount and Hasbro is Paramount, so it's like <laughs> Paramount Disney. Yeah, so there's a little bit of both in the parody, but not in this case. A Moon Knight is a, uh, is a, a, a sort of, he's sort of a little Batman, a little Shazam, and as if, like, somebody like the Joker was a good guy. Sort of, sort of a good guy. Um, an ambiguous anti-hero. He was a West Coast Avenger in the comics. He was a Secret Wars Avenger. Or the other Secret Avenger, not Secret Wars. That's easy. Uh, yeah, that would be right, yeah. Um, yeah. Tigger Wars was more. Yeah. Um, anyway, so, um, I think they both have their version of that. Yeah, they did that. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, um, um, in, because he's in, in this version is the TV or generation in which they decided that he should be more, more, more schizophrenic, more dissociated disorder than the, the other one because there were just two or three different versions of him. So unlike the different Robins and the different Batmans, they just decided he should just be schizophrenic and and, and see like his different alter egos or literally his alter egos, um, which is an interesting twist on it. Mm. Mm. So um, they, they, they even reference kind of this in Star Trek Picard over there at Paramount when they have this uh, sort of associated disorder with the Picard's mother, which doesn't make sense, but because she didn't have that originally, and she looked completely different originally. And they, they showed the mother and the grandmother and before, and never mentioned Picard's father. But yeah, um, and he'd know that his father was there as the counselor and see. But that's Picard, and uh, this is Moon Knight, uh, which, has, which has a sort of similar sort of, uh, you have an angel on the shoulder or demon on the shoulder kind of thing, but with Egyptian gods, an Egyptian Egyptian bird god, an Egyptian alligator god, a very pantheon of Egyptian gods, a floating bird skull, uh, which would be, uh, yeah, which would be also, um, in terms of the, um, the, um, the Rebian Techites from Starfighters also had a similar character that they worshipped a bird skull. So I didn't realize that they were Egyptian. The Techites. <laughs> I don't think they were. I think it was just like, it would be funny if they had a bird skull. And yeah, it, it wasn't that they were Egyptian. Although that gag did end up with the Zuri, the, the Zindi, very similar to Zuri, the Zindi aliens in, a, in Enterprise. Well, that's because, yeah, we had something to do with season three and four of that but uh, yeah so <laughs> um yeah so uh anyway so that's kind of weird or at least it seems that way um yeah it seemed that way anyway so we have moon knight which is um uh yeah uh yes the star trek story makes the incorrect assumption that Depression is the same thing as the other thing, which it isn't. Like, one of the characters is depressed in it. And they say, like, associated disorder and depression, not the same thing. Anxiety, not the same thing. Paranoia, not the same thing. They can manifest in different ways that are similar, but they're not the same thing. Anyway, so. Uh, uh, this character appears to also be depressed and lonely, and the character and he's living in, in is a... Uh, apartment all alone and stuff and he works for a works for a, like a gift shop of a museum uh there's there's but weird stuff starts to happen the first episode or a moon night uh, and then they flash back to the to the weird stuff going on with him, which is um, he keeps chaining himself to the bed but he keeps escaping at night anyway um <laughs> um yeah, and, and fighting crime and stuff. And at one point, he ends up with this weird town 
where uh, they uh, there's this crazy long-haired dude who who can make like life and death happen based on their sins. People just drop dead or they live. Um, I'm not sure what is he is he meant to be. I'm gonna hotep or something. I'm not really sure. Um, <laughs> but he's not a bird skull dude, floating bird skull dude. If Murray Abrams is in this, yeah, so he's in there. But uh, but um, yeah, the, the it's uh, the the thing over the shoulder thing also reminds me of that movie, The Spirit, and also the 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 uh, the, the Phantom movement. We also kind of a similar guy over the shoulder talking to him um similar to that um in the not the not the movie remake of the spirit but rather the the comic book the spirit the 30s show in the comic book radio show which in which the spirit was literally a ghost and there was a ghost person helping out and he had a girl friday kind of thing and he had and and the octopus was the bad guy and he was like you never saw his fans yeah, and in the, in the, you know, the remake, they didn't do that right at all. Um, San Sarif wasn't a bad guy. It wasn't that version, and for some reason, yeah, the octopus could be seen. Um, my generation remembers it, though, as uh, Inspector Gadget, because Dr. Claw was never seen. Same gag. Same exact gag. In fact, Inspector Gadget is kind of a rebuilt cyborg version of... of a <laughs> cyborg version of, of the spirit. With a little bit of dragnet thrown in there, so you can combine them. But yeah, this is a little dragnet in here too. A little James Bond in here. A little um, a little of everything. It 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 still by making it a little bit of everything. It is still a ripoff of Batman with with James Bond. A little bit of of, of that movie, The Mummy, with Brandon Fraser. But it could be a cross pollination because. I'm sure the people that did the Brandon Fraser's Mummy movies was were well aware of the Moon Knight comics and well aware of action serials and stuff like that. The same action serials from the 30s that inspired 1930s that inspired Indiana Jones. Hmm. And oddly enough, interestingly enough, not only inspired Indiana Jones, Alan Quartermain stories, uh, also inspired DuckTales and Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers, also Disney. So there you go. Both did. In fact, one of them was dressed as, as a, uh, uh, as Alan Quartermain or uh, Indiana Jones. The other one was dressed as Magnum PI, Chip and Dale. Yeah, they were. Yeah, so Magnum PI, which is from the eighties. Uh, he's a similar character. Uh, this guy uh, uh, is uh, Oscar Isaac's, who played in the Star Wars remakes of sequels. Um, the guy who played uh, the, the the captain, the the pilot guy, um, in the Poe Dameron, I think. Yeah, uh, he does a good job playing a totally manic schizophrenic, and and manic depressive is different from schizophrenic, and they are mixing them up. Manic depressive is something else. Manic depressive person doesn't necessarily have dissociative disorder; they're just manic depressive. Yeah, there's mood swings. That's a little different. A little different. Um, so, uh, but this character has dissociated disorder. This character blacks out, and the other one takes over. But it's sort of a possession thing. It's sort of, a, it's sort of like a Canary Space Book Seven with the aliens that have the ability to do that and go and be over their shoulder and enter them and stuff in their minds. And then they have to defeat the bad guy aliens because they can mess with their minds. They figured out how to do that. Um, it's an interesting idea. Um, and the reason it's like Shazam is Shazam's name is an anagram for several different heroes of Greek and Egyptian myth that are stuck together to make the name Shazam and the Black Adam and all that. Um, that's all, that's all. Uh, they just stuck everything in there. Uh, and of course, the Flash is Midas, basically, the running character. So there's a lot of, of the Superman is a, a Hercules, basically. So all, all, of, all the classic characters, you know, or something else. So this guy's this guy's not really a detective like Batman, but he's a knight character that transforms with a K, Dark Knight kind of thing. But I think it's cross pollinization. I think the Dark Knight with the and Batman is kind of yeah. DC and Marvel for years have been kind of copying each other. 
Because originally Shazam was also Mr. Marvel. Captain Marvel. But then they changed it to Shazam. It's Captain Marvel. Uh, and even the Captain Marvel movie and the Shazam movie had a similar ending. They changed the ending of the other one to make it different. And also the Dark Phoenix had the same ending as the other one. And they changed the ending to make it match. And the Dark Phoenix original ending is better. Although a little confusing, but better. Um... I don't know if the original ending of Shazam was was better though. They, they, they that was more, yeah. I think they they that was a toss up whether that was good, bad, or better. That was fine. It was okay. I mean, uh, there were a lot of movies copying that 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 formula at that point. Uh, yeah, and, um, and the whole you know, uh, usually it ended with a, a, if the special effects didn't work out, they ended with a lot of scenes filmed in the dark. Because they didn't want to show that the special effects weren't up to par. There's some, there's some interesting, um, but this one does that too a little bit, and it does the talky dialogue a little, bit, a little bit too much. Uh, the first episode drags on, but um, the, but when they get going, they they get going. The the trailer, the the night guy beating up the jackal, the very end of the first episode is interesting. Certainly, he's not heroic, really. He's kind of a villain. Um, the, the the but the other guy's manipulating him, and uh, and and apparently his at one point his wife shows up. There's all these calls from his wife, um, who is and the cell phones are earlier tech, and then sometimes they're later tech. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Sometimes they look like those little flip, flip burner phones from from like Walmart that are kind of designed to look like the early 2000 phones. And, and sometimes they are cell phones with standard texting and all that. So I'm not sure what's going on there. I'm not sure when it's supposed to take place. I think it's supposed to be current. It's not a flashback to some other period. It's it's um it's Marvel. It's uh it is a one off. This is only one season. Uh, and I'm about halfway through. And they have not shown the other th other three are caught up. Uh, Scott at the church recommended it, so I'm gonna watch it. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. The uh, I liked the music uh, in the third episode, the end of the first, the end of the second, and the third episode. Uh, I thought it was cool that they got they got Egyptian sounding music. You don't hear that that much, and it's kind of cool that they did some of that. Showed stuff that was like culturally interesting. Of course, there was a there were several couple of scenes where they were running through a bazaar. Of course, knocking over fruit carts always happens in movies, Ugh. and it reminded me of Team America: World Police for some reason. This fight scene in there, uh, and the other that jousting scene, and some other goofy stuff, and him getting shafted with spears, and somehow surviving because his suit is apparently cosmic. I guess it's a cosmic suit. I was reading up on the character, and apparently he has powers depending on who was writing him. <laughs> and uh, at one point, he had powers like Rogue from X Men, and he could drain other people's powers, the life force from them, drain their powers, making them weaker so he could fight them. Uh, other times, he's had super strength or could fly or teleport, but it would depend on who was writing it. Um, yeah. If he becomes a ghostly thing. I think it's cooler if he becomes like a ghostly thing. I think it's cool if he's like a, he's like a a, a version of uh, well, not really Ghost Rider, but he's a version of the spirit, and he can just go in and out of reality and just mess with it. Mm. Which would be even more interesting than dissociative disorder if he actually like could literally go into in and out of reality like Sliders. He could go in and out of reality like Sliders. That show that would be interesting too. If you, actually dimensional like isn't that he's crazy it's that there's actually like he's got other dimensions the multiverse is literally in his head or we could see different things going on and were the egyptian gods eternals at one point when they say oh we don't interfere they're eternals or watchers Eternal. eternals and watchers they mixed them up in the eternals movie um yeah which was not as good as this um this is a little better uh, this is better done yeah, so, uh, 
yeah. For what was basically originally just a ripoff of Batman with a with a with a originally the original one was a Batman detective at night fighting crime. That's what he was originally, but this version makes him more like Brandon Fraser's mummy, and that's fine. Um, uh, uh, <coughs> kind of works. It, well, it won't know yet, but uh, yeah, it was fine. Um, I gotta, that's all I have to say about the uh, three episodes here. And I have, he was getting over a cold, so that's why my voice is all messed up. Um, yeah, I decided to review it just now, so that was my review of Moon Knight, with a K, Moon Knight. Um, mm. Apparently it was connected to the Blade series, didn't know there was one. Uh, but the Kevin Feige version has retconned it. So, yeah. Um, and, and, uh, <clears throat> oh, yeah, there, there was a scene where, uh, in, uh, what was it? Yeah, uh, Eternals, where they referenced the, they got Harry Styles at the end, and it's like, some people asked about that, and I was like, yeah, that was kind of, I thought that was silly. But it's like, now they're going to have to put Harry Styles as that that other Eternal guy that escaped with it. his little leprechaun friend. And it's like, who's also powerful in comics, but it's Harry Styles. It's the guy from One Direction. He, 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 he was manufactured by X-Factor. It doesn't make any sense to include that guy as a main Marvel hero. No, recast him. Come on. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, so yeah. So I thought. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway. But he's not in this. He's in Eternals. Uh, I have not seen... I have not seen Fantastic Beasts 3. It's in theaters. I have not seen... Um, I have not seen Morbius. I haven't seen that one yet. Anyway, so... Uh, hmm. Anyway, so, uh, that's it so far. Moon Knight. That's fine. <laughs> it's entertaining enough, I guess.